Hello, Romans here and welcome to another music review. I review every album from a viewpoint of a musician as I'm a singer, songwriter and a bass player for my own group Jakob Bay. And more than two years ago we released our debut album called Persids in Life. What makes it unique is that it's a heavy prog rock without guitars. Instead you have drums, bass, saxophone and keyboards. You can check out all of our music videos on my YouTube channel. And in the description of all these videos you will find all the information about where is the record available. It's available on all digital platforms like Spotify, Tidal, Deezer, iTunes, Amazon, Bandcamp. But also in this digipack version of a CD with a very beautifully illustrated 20 pages long booklet. So in case you want one all you need to do is contact me via an email, on Facebook or on Instagram or you can get one through Bandcamp as well. And today I'm going to review the new album from the Midnight Monsters. Music review. Music review. The Midnight is probably the biggest and the most prominent band of the synth wave slash synth pop genre. And maybe there are other artists, but I haven't really dived that deep into this music territory I'm planning to anyway, but The Midnight seemed to be really the biggest name. And basically, if you don't know what synth wave and synth pop means, it's a music very heavily based on all the 80s nostalgia. So basically all the sounds that made 80s so iconic, especially the synths and keyboards, but also drum sounds. Monsters is actually their fifth release. They started in 2014 with Days of Thunder, then it was followed by Endless Summer in 2016 and this was the time when I discovered them and I was totally blown away by Endless Summer. It was fantastic. A year later it was followed by Nocturnal and another year later 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 in 2018 it was followed by The Kids which I also made a review for and this was actually at the time when I was still like two or three reviews away from including audio samples. I see all these releases as being studio albums, but actually I've come across this information that Days of Thunder and Nocturnal are both EPs, which is kind of a weird thing because Days of Thunder is 33 minutes long, which is a standard album length. Like it was a standard album length in like 70s and 80s and Nocturnal is way over 40 minutes. So for me, those are actually albums. But what may prove this information is that all of the releases that are considered to be full length studio albums actually have some sort of a year uh, on the cover. Like for example, Endless Summer has 1984 at the cover. The Kids have 1985. And the newest album, Monsters, has 1991 as an intro. So I guess all of these records are set in those times or in those years with the two albums or two releases that don't have any year being and spin-offs or EPs, whatever. <laughs> anyway, just a thing I realized before shooting this video. Before I even start with this review, I'm a huge fan of The Midnight and I'm, I kind of regret not seeing them live in October last year because they played, I think, in Vienna or Prague or Budapest, I'm not sure. But uh, because of the late stages of my wife's pregnancy, we just couldn't take that risk, but hopefully sometime in future. So anyway, their new album Monsters came out a couple of days ago. As of now, I've heard it eight times. Let's dive right into the review. The album opens up with 1991 intro and we hear these computer sounds that I'm too young to remember. <laughs> But I guess it's it's some kind of a connecting to internet or whatever. I'm not even sure internet was really around at that day. But, you know, there are some sounds that may be nostalgic or familiar to people who were maybe kids at that point. Then we go into America Online where we hear these pulsing synths and a very strong beat. There are some synthetic vocals which seem to be more of a texture rather than the main focus of the track. Are 
Dance With Somebody is a very bright, uplifting pop song. It immediately puts you into that place like summer, pool, party, the 80s. It's awesome. And there are also these altered vocals in the chorus which make it even more cool. And of course, we have the saxophone solo. Yay! <laughs> Seventeen is another beautiful track that I can imagine listening to while going out and there's this one line I really like When you're 17 the thought of a spark could start a fire I mean, I'm exactly like that and it's just such a shame that people sort of lose this attitude as they grow older and the world is a much worse place because of that When you're 17 the thought of a spark could start a fire Another song I absolutely love is Dream Away and I love that deep vocal loop that um, gives it almost like a Lion King vibe for whatever reasons and it has almost world music feeling because of that and I just absolutely love it. The Search for Echo is an ambient, relaxing, instrumental track. Prom Night is another gem and I love the mood the song puts you in. Uh, there are altered vocals in the chorus that actually give it almost like that 90s disco pop vibe and 90s disco songs, that's one of a few things I actually remember from the 90s. The title track Monsters is a duet with Jupiter Winter, who sounds just like Lady Gaga, she's great. And I like that both singers sing same parts, so it's like two different versions of the same story. And the chorus has great synths, and I love that deep voice. No harm, we were both wrong, moving on. A monster. Monsters. Helvetica is another instrumental which gives me Karate Kid vibes, maybe because I've seen it recently. I love how the speed and the pitch of the track are changing, it's almost as if somebody was tampering with the tape. Brooklyn almost goes into that AOR genre and they make it work like a charm. The saxophone is back in the track Deep Blue. It's an up-tempo song and a really great one. Me. 
Night Skies is vocally similar to America Online. City Dreams interlude. Again, we hear those tape effects as if you were listening to an old cassette or watching an old VHS. The last track is called Last Train and it's a very emotional closer of the album. Since the first moment I heard this album, I was literally blown away and I dare to say that this is so far the best album The Midnight have released to date and this is probably the album they will be measured by in future. I absolutely love this album to the point where I think that this is probably in top 3 best albums I've heard this year and I'm super excited to Keep coming back to it. Have you heard this album already? You can let me know in the comment section below whether you agreed or disagreed with me. If you are the Midnight's fan, you can let me know how well do you think it compares to their previous albums, maybe which one is your favorite one. Also, if you like this review and if you like the videos I'm making, consider supporting me by buying my record because I include audio samples and thus I make my reviews the most informative and entertaining to watch. I usually run a risk of getting a copyright claim, so that means I will never be able to earn any money of these videos. So the best and the only way how you can support me is by buying my debut album Pursuits in Life. At this point there's only one available, but there are more albums to come in future. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Instagram, you can find links to both in the description of this video below. Also, if you like this review, don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe. You can check out my own original music that also has a lot of saxophone. My live performances, my worst to best series and quite a lot of other reviews as well. Thanks a lot for watching.